What is up guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I wanna to talk about the Milwaukee job site backpack. Uh, I do HVAC automation, so commercial buildings, I do the controls and set up schedules and um, energy savings and stuff like that. And this is my daily carry. Every single job site I go to, I bring this in. If I need more stuff, I end up going to the car, but this has everything to get me through the day nine times out of 10. Um, before I get into this video, I was looking at the YouTube analytics and I saw that pretty much everybody that watches my videos is not subscribed. So if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe, hit the like button, help me grow my channel a little bit. Um, and then the more, the more positive reviews and views I see, the more effort I'll end up putting into these videos. So I'm really trying to grow here. So if you could leave a subscribe or leave a comment, like, subscribe, whatever, that'd be great. All right, let's dive right into it. So I've had this for about three years of use. Um, I had a Klein backpack before that, um, just a regular Klein tool bag. I have to have a laptop, so I have to have one of these backpacks that has a laptop sleeve. Um, I got this on sale for $70 three years ago, and I see that it's still on sale, or still for sale on the Home Depot website for uh, 100 bucks right now. So the time I'm filming this, um, that's kind of where we're at with the price. So... Let me just talk about some of the basic features that are important to me. If you can see, it has kind of a forward lean. All these bags do because you end up putting your laptop back here and then all your tools kind of weigh it out. And if you look at the bottom, it's got a really nice wide base. That's what I didn't like about the Klein backpack. The Klein one was kind of narrow and it would always just do this. Just be falling over constantly. And you always would get your stuff soaked. You'd drop tools out of there. Everything would get misarranged. Um, this one is the only one I've had. I've had the Vito as well. I didn't like it, and I sent it back. Um, I had the Vito. I think it's LT, and that has the laptop sleeve in the back. The reason I didn't like that is because it had did not have enough space for me. Um, this bag can expand, like I said, for 70 bucks. I think is the best one on the market, and I like um, this expanding pocket. If I got to grab some parts, I just you know shove them in here. I can stuff all kinds of stuff in there. So um, I'm gonna do a loadout video show you guys kind of everything that I have in here. And um, this just, I just got done with work today. So this is gonna be very fresh. Um, and am I missing stuff? Am I have extra stuff in it? We'll just kind of see together. Um, let's hop right into it. So let's we'll start with the back. Well, I guess I could show you this too. This um, chest strap broke on mine, which was, I really liked having it because I would clip it together if I was climbing up like a roof ladder or something but it broke because I stepped on it, not for any other reason than that, but that clasp right there broke. This one's still going, so kind of a bummer. I keep this S-beaner on here. I don't really use it for much. Um, sometimes I will clip it like this, and I can either hang this or hook it on something so that it doesn't fly around in my car. Um, that's what I used to do, um, at, you know, previous setups I had, but now it doesn't really do much, so it just kind of sits on the shoulder strap. Um, I'm gonna kind of take stuff out of this because I want to try to vacuum it out because it's got some wire scraps and stuff in it. Let's just start here and work backwards, I guess. Or right, we'll do the outside. So right here, I just keep a carabiner. Um, I have three different size Allen screws or hex keys on here, dog keys. This opens every like Daikin and Aeon and whatever kind of Univent. Um, this size opens it. I don't remember the exact size off the top of my head, but there's three. You can buy a three pack or three size pack, and there's five of each key on Amazon for like $15. And this opens some Univents, and then this for us adjusts our uh, VAV dampers. So the set screws on our VAV dampers. So I keep these three. I never need another set of Allen keys during the day. Um, I'm glad I figured out what the sizes were and what I needed because it's been really helpful. This is just a fob get me into my uh, company office. I never go there, so I just keep it on the backpack because I don't need it on my everyday keys. Uh, these let us into panels, just like our regular control panels. This is my lockout tag out key, I believe. I could be wrong about that. That's a regular panel key. That's a simplex uh, elevator key. And then I have this Olight uh, IR, or I'm sorry, 1R2 EOS, I think it is. And that just is a regular little flashlight. Um, I don't ever use this, but it just happens to be in the keychain, and it's just got a micro USB charger, so it's pretty handy. Um, that's that. 
I think these were meant for like screwdrivers or some kind of pliers or something, but I don't find much use out of them. So that's the outside there. I just keep a regular set of these um, Maxi Flex gloves from Home Depot. I get the XL size and they're still kind of tight. Um, I use these for when I am, yeah, they're just a little short in the palm, but um, for when I am working up on a roof and I don't want to get my hands cold and wet when I'm just out, you know, it's, I live in upstate New York. So when the weather's harsh, touching that metal stuff on the roof, whatever rooftop units or something you're working on, not pleasant. So I just always keep those there. Just keep a couple uh, rolls of tape. Always get the Scotch 3M ones, Super 88 for black and then 33 plus. I just use white, mostly for flagging. I'll rip off a piece and put it on a wire and write a note or something, or just stick it on something. But I don't really need it a ton, so I just keep it clipped up here. My dad made this uh, little, you know, tape holder, and it's actually worked great. I've had that for many years, and it's held up awesome. I used to keep my uh, chicken stick right here, my voltage tester, non-contact voltage tester right there. I took it out because I got it in another pouch. You'll see it in a minute. And I just keep some highlighters, uh, pencil, pen, just if I got to mark stuff down, they're kind of quick, easy grab. And I always keep a red pen and uh, like a pocket screwdriver in my shirt pocket on my polo that I have to wear for my company uniform. So I always have a red pen for doing like as built on control drawings or something. Um, this side. So I got Olight Swivel. I just did a video about this talking about one of my favorite tools of the year. Got three of these, three total. I keep one just clipped on the bag, um, one in the shop and one wherever I you know, need it. But these are pretty cool. If you don't know about these, look them up. They're really awesome for like 30, 35 bucks. That's like the perfect you know, work light for electricians or control guys, even HVAC service guys. It's really a great light. And then I just keep one of these canvas bags. It's got my initials written on it. Oh, this is a Greenlee one. And then inside it, I have more bags. And I don't know if... Oh, you can't see them. I'm sorry. Slide this back. I just have more of these, like, canvas bags inside there. Um, this just has a bunch of... If I can show you down in there. We make these little, like, suppressions for, you know, over-voltage spikes for our controllers. Just random... Uh, I lost the name of these jumper pins, butt splices, dolphin connectors, forks. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a shot there. You know, just random electrical stuff. Um, this is just the wire nuts. This is the most common grab bag. I always need like the orange blues um, or the blues or the oranges. Sometimes, you know, I have a couple of these just in case we're doing something with higher than 24 volt power. And then just a little miscellaneous bag of screws just in case I need something. I don't really ever need these. And inside there, um, another thing that is absolutely essential to me is these zip ties. I'm always constantly, you know, neatening up uh, low voltage wiring or something. And I keep these quarter inch brass fittings for pneumatic uh, control valves, just in case you know, get an air leak or something. They're not doing a ton of pneumatic. I do the construction now. I used to do service, so. That was a lot more important to me before um, when I was doing uh, service work and needed to do quick repair, repairs on the fly. So I'm just gonna kind of pull everything out and leave it there. Um, this pocket here, I have a bunch of different screwdriver type deals, um, driving bits, a backup uh, control terminal screwdriver, I can get everything out of there. I don't want this video to be super long, so I'm just gonna kind of rip through this. Got the Weeha, there's the part number. Um, stubby, this thing's awesome. Good grip, I love Weeha screwdrivers. A Malco, I think that's the four inch, just a Milwaukee extension, screwdriver extension. Another one, just a little longer. Can just like do some really crazy <laughs> extending if I really needed to with this. And then I have this six inch Malco, which is the old style. I don't know if you can tell the difference there. Sorry about the focus. Um, this one normally would run in my impact. I used to keep my impact in this bag. I don't anymore because I don't really need it. 
but I just threw this four inch in recently. So I gotta take this one probably out and leave it on the bench. I don't really need a six inch out in the field anymore. Just a various assortment of screws or of uh, drivers. This is pretty cool. This is a three millimeter um, to a hex attachment, quarter hex attachment. So same size as my other control screwdrivers, but uh, I could just put it in a real big size screwdriver handle and that'd be great, you know? So just keep these just in case I need them, just a various sets of different things I run into across the field. And I really like these, these are cheap. The Wera, um, there's a part number if you want it. Um, I got these for like two bucks, I bought a few of them. I don't use these every day, but they are good if I need one. That's a good one to hand out if someone needs one, you can just say, yeah, keep it. I just on that note of what I carry every day, you guys have probably seen this before, but I got these Klein screwdriver or er, strippers. Jeez. Um, which I guess I'll show. There's the strip sizes, so it gives you a large array of things. Um, and then these two Weha. There's that's what I use for my terminal screwdriver, and then I use this 11 in 1 multi screwdriver. And that lives in my cargo pocket, so if you feel like something of these three tools is missing, it's because I'm already carrying it. So as we continue this loadout, that's what we got. This video is gonna be so long. Um, thanks for watching, I appreciate it guys. So moving forward, um, I got nothing really in here. I just recently cleaned this out. Let me just tilt this down just a bit. I just recently cleaned this out. So probably like a month ago, I say recently. Um, I just threw a nine volt battery in here. It helps test speed signals or whatever I might need a zero to 10 signal uh, for I can just put nine volts to it and see if a valve actuates or whatever so I tape the ends of that just so it doesn't discharge in the bag um, and here oh I got a bunch of cat six uh, splices and a couple other just random terminals that I might run into in the field just depending on a controller type but these are really essential if we're putting in new controllers and one area is not ready yet, we can put in a junction or a coupler rather where um, that controller would be. So that's pretty handy. So I just keep a little bag of those. I put my initials on them typically, apparently none of these have, yeah. So I just put my initials on them just so that I know I can get them back, which that's not really likely to happen. Um, nothing else in there, just a random wire nut. Must've fell in. We'll talk about the Joey pouch. I want you guys seeing all my notifications on my watch. Um, holster Joey pouch carried every day. Love it. Um, I just keep an assortment of Wera screwdrivers, control size screwdrivers on here. Got the 1 16th hacks, zero size Phillips, and then the 2.0 um, slotted. And I just do that because I have a 3.0. Uh, my pocket screwdriver has a 2.5. And then this, you know, just gives me that wider range that I need. And then I just keep a thin Sharpie, an ink saw, a red pen, some zip ties. So this pretty much, and then, you know, if I got to lash something on there, I just have a carabiner. This pretty much carries everything I need um, on the outside, admin wise. These normally are not in here. I toss them in here today. I think I'm removing these from my lineup. Um, I don't really enjoy grabbing these when I, typically everything I have to do is in a bad spot. So I'm in a ceiling somewhere. I can't reach up. These are really hard to blindly use. I don't know if you guys watched Last Best Tool, but he was just talking about that, I think, recently. Um, these are hard to blindly use. So an adjustable wrench, a regular adjustable wrench is a lot handier to use. And you'll see, I'll just show you now. I just have one of the wide mouth Klein ones. Um, and I just keep that in there and I'm just gonna do that from now on. I find that a little easier. This will probably go in one of my home to go bags or something. So I just toss that in there for now. But story about this, I love this uh, quick attach screwdriver. Um, the problem that I've been running into is, I'll try to explain this. I need that quarter inch nut driver off my multi bit. I do this, I set this in the ceiling somewhere and never find it again. I have three of these screwdrivers. I only have one slotted bit left. I apologize with the focus. I don't know what's going on. Um, so what I've decided is I'm gonna start carrying one of these at all times so that I can take off, you know, zip screws or whatever 
and not take my bit out anymore. So <laughs> that's what I've been doing. I've been keeping one of these um, always in the pouch. And you guys already have seen this probably, but I got my side cutters and then my twin grips. Just an awesome group. Um, I don't know if you guys know about these, but I'm assuming you do if you're watching YouTube tool videos. Got the screw extraction end on there and you can see I got stuff on there. These are awesome for pulling out fuses. You can get in straight and pull them out or jumpers or whatever. These are super handy or spade connectors, anything like that. So I just got those there. Um, this normally had been riding on the outside. Now I keep it in here. I only trust Fluke, so with my non-contact voltage tester, Fluke is the way to go. Right now I just got, <laughs> here I am exposing myself. Oh, I found a, I found a Wago lever nut on a job. I like when guys use those. Oh, sorry, I'm out of frame. I like when guys use those uh, for connecting our 24 volt power. It makes it really easy for troubleshooting and disconnecting them versus this honking wire nut on there. Um, I need to stack up some more blue, blue orange yellow or uh, wire nuts in here, but that's normally what's kind of living down in that bag. Recommend this pouch highly to anybody. Um, so that is that. I'm gonna leave that out. Put this here. Okay. Just a Fluke 324 clamp meter. The reason I'm going with the clamp meter as of right now, this very moment is because it's thin and I can stick this in my pocket or I can stick it in this pouch. No problem like that. My other one is way too big for that. Um, I really like the Fluke 107. I just don't want to spend a hundred bucks on another meter when I have like six of them. So I would really like to get that 107. Just haven't spent the money on it yet. Um, so I got that. I really only need to test AC, DC, continuity and and that's pretty much it. I should be able to check four to 20 milliamps, but I don't really care to do it. And I always blow a fuse when I do, cause whatever. So I don't have a ton of tools. So you guys might be bummed out by a loadout like this, but I just don't need a ton of tools. So I keep this mainly for the crimping ability for putting on spades or butt splices. Um, these Klein tools, I don't know if a part number's on here. If it is, it's probably rusted. 2005N. These are awesome, wire stripper built in. Whenever I'm doing a lot of stuff where I'm crimping, I always end up using the stripper and I actually really like it. They're just a little too big um, to carry every day, but I like that it has the, the end nipper on it too. So maybe I'll consider switching to that. Um, I think I already tried it and I didn't like how long they were, but really handy tool, recommended. Always gotta carry a demolition screwdriver. This is probably my least favorite one. Um, as I said that out loud, I'm thinking maybe I should swap it out because it isn't my favorite, but just something to beat on, something to pry on. Always need something like that. Um, I just threw this in today because I was doing a bunch of uh, switch cover plates because we had to remove some sensors from the wall. So I was just putting on blank covers. So I just put in this from my uh, pack out setup in my car. And yeah, it's probably gonna come back out, but for now it's there, it doesn't weigh a ton, so whatever. Um, 250 Cobras. These are nice because they're bigger. Um, you know, I just keep these just in case I need something. If, if I need something in this size range, this typically works pretty well. I can get on something. And then if we're really talking, needing to do some serious work, well, serious in terms of HVAC controls anyways, uh, these are plenty big enough for me. I used to only carry the seven and a quarter or seven and a half inch ones and they were adequate. You guys saw the adjustable wrench. Um, I keep a pair of needle nose. I'm not sure why I don't really ever use these when I do need them. It's handy that I have them, but I don't use them on a day to day basis. So I probably should take them out. Um, yeah, here we go. Live, live thoughts. Um, this is kind of a, a duet here or a couple. I apologize for how long this video is going try to wrap it up here. Um, we work on Schneider Electric um, MP controllers, so MPX controllers. So they run off Cat 6. Um, we have to be able to crimp on ends, so I keep a Schneider Electric crimper in here. Um, pretty much self-explanatory. That's kind of the deal, but I keep these shears in here. Um, and these have been really good. They got some sticky crap on there, but 
I kind of use these to score on the outside of that Cat6 cable, and then I can always do a nice clean cut across the ends to you know cut off the excess uh, conductors inside. But this is a pass-through version, so it really this is a good setup um, if you aren't familiar with it. I didn't even remember this was in here magnet pickup tool <laughs> probably would have been handy many times didn't even remember it was in there so i'm gonna leave it in there and probably forget about it again um and then the last thing which feels like something's missing probably something is missing but i guess not i really only ever need a 10 millimeter we work on belimo valves um all of their well belimo actuators all of theirs are 10 millimeter unless you're getting into the really big ones. Um, so I just keep a deep 10 millimeter because they have passed through uh, bolts that go through the nuts. I just taped it just because before I used to use this for tightening terminals um, on drives. So I taped it in case I was going to get shocked, which I always would work on stuff dead because I've been shocked before and I don't want to do it again. And then I just keep this Bulimo 13 millimeter wrench. I don't even remember what those fit on. I feel like all the new Blimos are 10 millimeter, like I said. So that's it. Uh, well, I guess it's not it. So let me get this. Let's just turn this around because I don't want to put that stuff away and bore you guys to death with that. Keep my computer. I'm just going to try to cover up my phone number. I just accidentally showed my employer, so I'm just redoing this section here. But I just keep a laptop. That's what I do all my controls with. Um, you know, doing the automation part and programming and point checking, commissioning, whatever. Uh, I got a couple things in here. That's just a random piece of four conductor 18 gauge. Um, this has been an awesome blessing. If you don't know about these, you can get these new, I think this is a Mo Point. It does 66 watts in this tiny little deal. I can charge my phone with it. I can charge whatever with it. And I keep a 15 foot uh, USB-C cord. That's super small and way better than a regular laptop charger. So it was worth spending the money for dealing with that all the time. Just some random assortments of, well, there's my iPhone charger, that white cable in there. And then some random Cat6 cables, jumpers, whatever, patch cables that I need. Just keep a few of them in there. Um, I got this pouch. I was keeping this uh, for a little while, just in case I came on a plug that I couldn't get onto, but I, this probably can come out. I don't use it ever. Um, and then just random, um, I got cat six ends in there, a couple couplers, just some more electronics, uh, cables, some things to connect to our automation servers, just random cables in there. But anyways, that's it. If you guys want to know more about my job and what I'm doing, I know this, uh, layout here isn't the best, but that's kind of, everything that I have crammed in that bag and carry around on a day to day. If you guys want to know more or have any questions, please ask them down in the comments. Thanks for being here. This video is like 23 something minutes long. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one.